Hello everyone. So today we are going to see another basic maths um, concept. All right. So in this uh, lecture, we'll talk about prime numbers, and uh, we'll write a program to check whether a number is prime or not. All right. Now let me brush up your memory and uh, tell you about prime numbers. So prime numbers are the numbers which are only divisible by one or themselves. All right. For example, here suppose the number is thirteen. So what would be the numbers which would divide thirteen? One and thirteen only, and that is going to be a prime number. Suppose input is sixteen. So what would be the divisors here? It would be one, two, four, eight. And sixteen. So output is you know no. All right. Now suppose input is one zero one. The divisor would be what one and one zero one. And so it is going to be a prime number. And so output is yes. So this is how we are. Uh, this is how our, this is the definition of prime numbers. All right. Now pause this video for two minutes and think about a solution. All right. Now first, talk about the basic solution, which many of you might have guessed. So, this is going to be the nice solution, which many of you would have guessed. All okay, right, here we have a function, a prime function, where we take n user defined n as a parameter, and inside this, what we have done? If n is one, we'll return false, right? So what are we doing here is we are uh, running a loop, uh, iterator i, which begins from two and goes till n minus one, and we check if at any point i divides n. Right? If at any point i is going to divide n, we are going to return false. All right? We are going to return false. Okay? And if uh, there is no such i, we'll then simply return what? True. Yes. Now, what would be the time complexity of this nice solution? It is going to be what? Big O of n. The worst case would be when i is not a you know when i is prime number, then the it would be the Worst time complexity, and we have to write it in three ton uh, in as in protein notation. It is going to be big O of n. All right. Now try to think of a solution which would be better than this nice solution part. Okay. So pause for two minutes and think of a solution. All right. Now let me tell you about the better solution. So, so here is the idea which we'll use for a better solution. So the idea is that divisors always occur in pair. Right? For suppose thirty divisors would be what one for one we have thirty right pair for two we have fifteen a pair for three we have ten a pair five we have six a pair right. Similarly in sixty one sixty pair. Two thirty pair, three twenty pair, four fifteen pair, five twelve pair, and sixteen pair. Right now, twenty five, one and twenty five, and five and five. Right, so these are the pairs. Now, from this idea, can you you know improve the surge or improve the time complexity of the prime checkers uh, code? Then, so let me tell you about it. Here is our thing. So if x and y are suppose a pair, then x cos y is equal to n, right? And suppose we one is going to be smaller number and one is going to be bigger number, or they can both be equal. Suppose x is either smaller or equal to y, right? So here, this equal to can be substituted with this. Sign and we can put x 
in place of y. The formula would come right. Now here is square x square is less than equal to n. As you can say, if x is equal to or less than n, right? So we can see that every number will have, if not prime, will have a divisor which would be less than or equal to the square root of it. Right here x. Suppose there is a y also. There is a y divisor also, but it will have a smaller pair, divisor pair x which would be less than root n. Right. So instead of running a loop for i less than n, we can run the loop for i less than or equal to root n. The time complexity that is would become big O of root of n. So this is going to be a better solution, right? So this is the better solution. Alright, now let's try to code this. Okay. Hmm. So let's include header file. Okay. And let's have uh, this one. Let's first of all let's write our main function. We'll take in from user. Alright. And what we wanna do is here we'll write function is prime. N C out true or we can try not prime and here we can write prime All right now let's write the function here s prime okay now we have the condition of we'll explicitly check for one right if n is equal to one we'll simply gonna return false okay now what we are going to do is we are going to orient i is equal to two now instead of running i till n minus 1, we are going to run i till less than or equal to n. So the square root of n for that we have used i into i greater than or equal to n. We have simply done i plus plus. Alright. If n percent i is equal to 0 we will do what we will simply return false or else we are going to return true okay okay there is some problem of okay yeah yeah okay. yes so this is going to be our program. Let's try and run it. Alright, suppose let's take the examples which we used earlier. 13. Okay. 13 prime. That's what we saw in the example as well. Let's try for 16 not prime yes that was the expected answer mm, all right yeah 100 on right expected right so this is you know the better solution for prime checker so from 
you know this video i hope that you learned about that there are as we talked in the previous videos of asymptotic analysis that a program has many solutions right and as a developer your task is find the most efficient one which takes the least time so many are, i am pretty sure many of you have guessed about this nice solution that we we'll, you know run a loop from two till as a number and get them a i divide and will return false but many very few of you have thought about the better solution which is which works fairly better than the nice solution this is your task you know to decrease the time complexity and make your program faster all right so i hope you understood how the prime checker function uh, or program works and this was all for this video see you next time